How would you go about doing this if you had maybe two finished goods that were that were very similar? And uh, the way I like to do that is let's let's copy this. And then we'll we'll go back to, to months. So we'll call this um, Okay, let's leave this as our starting point, but I want to do kind of two finished goods, again, that are similar, that are at the same distribution lo location. So let's um, try and uh, insert some rows here. Oops. So I'm going to put two rows under each one of these items. And then the, the area that are in bold, these are going to be our kind of our aggregate or, or summary fields. And this will make sense in a minute as I start to kind of fill this in. All right, so let's define our, our forecast. Let's also, uh, we're going to want to add one more column here. Okay, so this will destroy kind of the, the piece at the top, but, but that's all right, we're, we're moving on. All right, so let's kind of call our, our two finished goods are gonna be, let's say a, 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 a 10 mig product that has 30 tablets and a 10 mig that has 50 tablets. All right, um, unit of measure here is each is because these are finished goods. Okay, this gets us started. So what you'll see here for uh, the receipts section, which would be these three rows, we're gonna have the receipts for each of the finished goods, and then I'm gonna have a summary row at the top. So the unit of measure for the aggregation is gonna change a bit. Uh, so what I wanna start to do is put it in some common unit of measure that makes sense. So if both of these finished goods have, a, have the same tablet, and the only way they differ is the number of tablets that, that they have in each finished good, a good way to summarize this is gonna be the unit of measure is tablets. So we'll, we'll, we'll change that. Months is gonna be fine. Okay, I still have a little bit of formatting to clean up here, so let's, let's do that now. Again, I always try to make these uh, models relatively clean because um, it just helps you keep organized. So when we get to it, our inventory value, we now need two different standard costs. So inventory value for the, let's say the 10 mig uh, 30 tablet will be 100. Let's say it will be um, 
1975. Okay, I think we're all set there. Correct this typo. All right, let's start to, to fill some of this stuff in. So let's delete out kind of all of this and we'll, we'll start over with filling in this, this grid uh, clear. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna to have to do, and I lost my grid lines, sorry about that. So we'll make up a uh, forecast here. So we're going to be in monthly buckets. So we'll say this one is smaller. Okay, again, this is just made up data, but it gives us something to work with. Okay, so now we've got demand. Uh, again, let's start with um, how many units in inventory we have for each of these finished goods. So we'll, we'll go with 2,500 here, and then here we'll say we're at 1,700. And I'll leave the aggregation fields blank for the moment. Uh, I'll show you how to kind of tie those uh, together. So we're going to go back to our, our inventory balance equation, which is the ending inventory for September for this finished good has to be the starting inventory plus whatever is received minus the forecast. I'll drag this over and we'll do the same for this one beginning plus receipts minus sales Oops. okay so now we have the model set up to project uh, forward-looking inventory levels and let's move on to the next piece so let's calculate out our, our receipts so let's say we want to have a two months of cover inventory policy on the first one and a three months of cover on the second one. We'll, we'll do our same formula again. We'll, we'll start off with um, what we want the ending inventory be, to be. So the sum, we want to end with two months of cover for this one. So we want the ending inventory to be the sum of the next two months of demand. And that's minus beginning plus sales all right so that's going to bring in a thousand units so that we end the month with 2500 units which covers those two periods uh, of forward-looking demand now again i i want to just uh put a little condition on this so we don't end up in a situation where excel could be telling us to bring in negative inventory which which isn't something that we want to allow in this model we'll copy that All right, so now we've got this formula written. So we'll scroll that over. And now let's uh, do the same for the next one. But in this case, we want this to be three months of cover. So we already have most of this written. We'll just copy that. And in this case, it's gonna, if I leave it as is, it's gonna bring in enough inventory so that we end with two months of cover. So it's gonna end with 1,100 here, which is the sum of the next two months of demand. We will actually want, in the, for this particular finished good, to have the next three months of demand covered. So we wanted to bring in enough. So we end the period with 1700 units. So the way we do that change 
is just extend out what we want our inventory, our ending inventory to be. So instead of just covering the next two months of demand, we want it to cover the next three. So we'll change the formula so that it goes from column G to column I, which you can see right here. All right, so now it brings it into 1700, which will be our three months of cover. And we'll put in our months of cover calculation so you can see that. But, but we can do the quick math in our heads and see uh, that it all works out. All right, so that's basically the, the, the foundation. So let's put in our, our, our periods of cover stuff. And again, I'm going to reuse that, that formula that I've written. Uh, it's a macro in, embedded in this Excel spreadsheet. I can share the code. It's, it's very straightforward. So periods of cover for this starting inventory. So let's just pick the next six months of demand. Change the formatting. I can drag that down so it works. Whoops. All right, so now we've got our periods of cover, our months of cover calculation. You can see the model drives it to two months of cover for the first finished good, three months for the next one. Let's do our inventory value. So that's nothing more than the ending inventory level times the standard cost. Okay, change the formatting a bit, oops. Okay, so now we have our inventory value for both finished goods uh, based on the inventory projection and the standard cost, which the standard cost again is down here in our parameters section. So let's start to build in the aggregation rows. No, so for, so for inventory value, this is very simple. It's just the sum of the two. All right, so now we know our total inventory level. And one thing you can do maybe to make this easier to read is your aggregation rows, you can sometimes bold and then leave the other ones unbolded. That way you kind of get a, the separation visually. Visually, I'm sorry. save this so we don't lose it okay so now we need to address these kind of aggregation columns up here for receipts forecast inventory and then when we're done we'll do inventory coverage so the easiest way to do this is uh, our common unit of measure of tablets so I just created this other column at the beginning and we're going to use this now so for this particular finished good the total number of tablets included is 30 and for this one it's 50 and we'll just reference those hard-coded numbers in the cells below that are also going to need it. So now what you need to do is to figure out total number of tablets forecasted in a particular period. We're just going to take this finished goods demand times the number of tablets plus the other finished good times the number of tablets. We'll lock down that reference. And now you can see it's, in this case, it's 65,000 tablets for that particular month. We'll send that over. And now you can do the same for the other rows. In this case, we can just literally just copy and paste it. Okay, so here you can see it's calculated by the total number of finished goods that need to be received in, the, in that particular period, multiplied by the number of tablets that are in each of those finished goods. That's how we get our aggregation. So we'll do it. And okay, so we have now all of our aggregation fields. 
This might help. I want to clean this up a little bit to try to make it easier to read. doing here is using the, the accounting format but removing the, the the dollar sign I just like to get the commas in the number it makes it easier to read um, and let's put this in okay that's pretty good Okay, so now we have uh, the aggregation fields filled in. So you can see in any given month, we seem to be selling about 65 to anywhere between 60 and 70,000 tablets a month. Uh, the replenishment uh, in aggregate is, is equivalent to that. And then you can see our inventory level as well as the total number of uh, the total value of the inventory in any given month. The last thing will be is the periods of cover calculation for the aggregation. So we'll just reuse our, our macro. Our starting inventory is now the inventory uh, for the calculated kind of aggregation and then the demand row is here. And then we'll And that's it. So that's how you would model the um, uh, kind of the replenishment requirements for two finished goods at the same location uh, if the finished goods are, are, are kind of similar in nature. Uh, I do this uh, because it gives me these nice aggregation fields which give me some insight into what the upstream supply chain operations need to be on a given month uh, as well as it kind of sets me up to, to build out my supply chain model which we'll, we'll cover in, in kind of future tutorials. But, but that's it, that's, that's how it works. A couple of things to point out that, that we could do to make this a little better. You can see here at the end of the model, because the demand stops and the replenishment requirements are forward looking. So what is required to be replenished in November 2013 is going to be based on demand that is beyond uh, the end of 2013, right? So it's kind of the first quarter of 2014 forecast is really what's going to drive that. So if you have zero values here, it's not going to bring anything in because it doesn't need to. So let's just, to keep things kind of going, I'll just hold demand flat, which is a, a reasonable assumption this far out. And you can see doing that starts to bring in the replenishment requirements for the tail end of the model.